This is the first of the market structures series um, in the IB high level only microeconomics component. Uh, this is part one of perfect competition. So let's start by um, talking about the assumptions involved when analyzing or talking about this market structure. What are the assumptions of this model, assumptions of perfect competition as a model? The first assumption is that there's a very large number of firms. These firms are all producing a homogenous or um, identical products. There is freedom of entry and exit. Any firm can enter or exit the market at any time. There is perfect information. All consumers and producers are very well informed. They're perfectly informed about costs, revenues, price. There's perfect information. And there is perfect resource mob mobility, meaning resources can be allocated and reallocated um, as freely as possible. Now, this is a very hypothetical and theoretical model. It's not very realistic, um, but it is a starting point. It's a useful starting point for explaining how firms operate. So, the first thing we need to know about perfect competition as a, as a, as a market structure or as a model uh, for market structures is how price is set. So basically, because the firms are so small and there's such a large number of firms, uh, the equilibrium price is set by the market. So market demand interacts with market supply to set the equilibrium price. This is the equilibrium price here. Once that is set, each firm becomes a price taker. So they take that equilibrium price that is set by the market. And this is why the demand curve that each firm faces is a horizontal, perfectly elastic demand curve. It is also their average revenue and marginal revenue curve. So average revenue equals price equals marginal revenue. This is the demand curve that one firm in a perfectly competitive market faces. So let's have a look at how a perfectly competitive firm maximizes its profits in the short run. So there are three scenarios. A perfectly competitive firm can either earn an economic profit, abnormal profit in the short run. It can make a loss, which is a negative economic profit, or it can earn a normal profit. Let's have a look at each scenario. So once again, as I said, the horizontal um, curve is the horizontal demand curve. This is the average revenue and the marginal revenue curve. We know that profit maximization occurs at the intersection of marginal revenue and marginal cost. So marginal revenue intersect at this point here with marginal cost. You go down, this gives you Q star, so the profit maximizing level of output, and P star is the profit maximizing price, which was set by the market, because remember each firm is a price taker. Now, from that point of intersection, you go down until you intersect the average cost curve, and this gives you the average cost at this profit maximizing level of output. And that little box here uh, between price and average cost that I'm about to shade in blue is the abnormal profit that is earned by this firm. Uh, it's that little box here. Here's another situation of profit maximization in the short run. So, um, this is a situation where a firm is making a negative economic profit or a loss. Once again, the profit maximizing or the loss minimizing level of output occurs at the intersection of marginal cost and marginal revenue. You go down to the horizontal axis, the output axis, to get the profit maximizing level of output, Q star. P star is the price. But this is a situation where the price is lower than average cost because if you go up from this intersection until you... Um, intersect the average cost curve. This gives you the average cost. As you can see here, the firm is making a loss. And here is um, the loss that the firm is making. Um, it's shaded in orange. This is the loss that the firm is making because the average cost is higher than the price at this um, level of output, the profit maximizing or the loss minimizing level of output. And this is the last possible scenario that could happen in the short run. A profit maximizing perfectly competitive firm in the short run can also earn zero economic profit. So earn just a normal profit. 
Once again, the intersection of marginal cost and marginal revenue gives us Q star. And here is the case where um, the average cost curve intersects the marginal cost curve at the same point. So price actually equals, uh, this is a situation where price uh, set by the market is just enough to cover uh, the average cost. Here we say the firm is earning a normal profit because we assume that the opportunity cost, which is an implicit cost, is included in the total costs of the firm. If you don't remember that, you might need to go back to uh, a previous video in the Theory of the Firm series that talks about economic and, and, uh, and normal and abnormal profit. So anyway, here's a situation where the firm is earning a normal profit in the short run. And this happens where marginal revenue intersects marginal cost, and it just so happens that at this price, it's also equal to average cost. So we've seen three possible scenarios in the short run. What about profit maximization in the long run? Well, in the long run, a perfectly competitive firm can only earn zero economic profit. And that's the interesting thing. In the long run, it can only earn a normal profit. So it will look like the previous diagram that we saw. Um, it will look like this. Again, the intersection of margin revenue and marginal cost. Price happens to also equal average cost at the same level of output Q star. So why is it that in the long run, a perfectly competitive firm can only earn normal profit? Let's see. The reason why a perfectly competitive firm can earn a normal profit, can only earn a normal profit in the long run, is because if the firms in a perfectly competitive market are making an economic profit or abnormal profit in the short run, because of freedom of entry and exit, remember the assumptions at the beginning of the video, this would attract other firms into the market. And therefore the market supply would increase and each firm would face more competition more competition would drive prices to go down until those abnormal profits disappear over time. And here, as you can see, because of freedom of entry and exit, the supply curve shifted to the right, which pushed the price down. This push in the price down eventually um, got rid of the abnormal profits, which is this box shaded here in light brown. Uh, so this is a situation where firms were making an abnormal profit, but because of freedom of entry and exit, other firms were attracted into the market and this slowly chipped away or made the abnormal profits disappear over time. Similarly, if the firms are making a negative economic profit or they're making a loss in the short run, this would encourage firms to leave the market. When firms leave the market, the market supply would decrease, the market supply curve would shift to the left, and each firm would face less competition, and therefore prices would go up. So the losses, the negative economic profit, would disappear over time. As you can see here, um, this box shaded in light orange is the loss, and over time, because of the rise in price, the loss disappeared until the firm got back to earning a normal profit, or a zero economic profit. And therefore, in the short run, perfectly competitive firms can either earn uh, abnormal profit or can make a loss or can earn normal profit. But in the long run, perfectly competitive firms can only earn uh, zero economic profit or can only make a normal profit. Thank you very much.